brand new TV show spoiler review here on Max Talks Movies. My name is Max Dinnerberg. Today we're breaking down season seven of the Netflix show Big Mouth. We're going to break down everything that happened in the season. Also, may, mostly give my general thoughts on the second to last season of this longest running Netflix TV show. So welcome back to the channel. I'm Max Dinnerberg. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring the bell, and ring that bell for notifications. I do. I talk movies, TV, and box off as well as doing box office breakdowns as well as movie franchise rankings. So please subscribe to the bell if you're in the channel. Comment down below. What are your thoughts on season seven of Big Mouth? Did this bring Big, Big Mouth back to its rightful place and form perspective? Are you sad that we're only one more season left of this show? Then let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. All spoiler thoughts, of course. Also, please like the video, the thumbs up button. That is how you support the channel. So uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not, you know that I'm a pretty big fan of this series. I reviewed every season that has been out on, on Big Mouth since I've started this YouTube channel back in 2020. So I've been reviewing the show really since 2020, which was season four. Um, I also have reviewed not just all those seasons of Big Mouth. I've also reviewed the first two and the only two seasons of the Netflix spinoff show of Human Resources on Big Mouth, which I also have done a review of earlier this year. So I'm a big fan of Big Mouth on Netflix. It's really funny for me. And let's get into my thoughts on season seven. So this for me is actually one of my favorite seeds of Big Mouth. I think right up there of seasons one for me, because the finally the story is becoming more focused. Now, I don't know if that is because we have an end line now, because we know that the show is ending next year with season eight. No more human resources, just this season of Big Mouth and next year's season of Big Mouth. And I do feel like that the show has become more focused. Now, the, they, they didn't make the joke throughout this season, but it's true that they have still been in middle school for six seasons now. And I think a lot of people kind of got tired of them just still being in middle school. How many more of these ideas can you think? And a lot of people I know who love the show just stopped watching because they thought it was just the same thing. I do think it was a great thing that earlier, the first half of this um, season is about them basically about to graduate, then graduating middle school. Um, we have kids, uh, you know, Nick visits a new private school and then we get move on to the summer uh, the last summer as being middle schoolers. And then the, the last episode is their first day of high school. I really enjoyed that because I'm with you. I, well, I, I like every season of Big Mouth. It does kind of get forgettable season to season because there just feels like a lot of them are just the same thing, which is funny jokes, great characters, but they're still in middle school and doing a lot of the same bits over and over again. I really like this now going into high school and especially for the character of Nick, who was for me the MVP of this season. Nick and obviously and Andrew do some drugs earlier in the season and this caused Nick to be in trouble with his parents. And instead of um, you know grounding him or anything like that, their parents take Nick to a private school for Nick to take a tour of if he wants to go to that school. Now, while Jesse J and all the other kids are going to Bridgetown, or I think it's called Bridgetown, Bridgetown High instead of Bridgetown Middle School. Nick's going on this tour. So Nick is dreading, of course, because of course he wants to go to school with his best friend, Andrew and Jesse and, and Jay. But Nick then meets a girl in his season, which I just really loved this part. Uh, Zazie Beats voices um, the new uh, chick for Nick in this season. She's 15 years old, so she's in high school. And the the girl um, gets into a bit of a thing with her old best friend, and Nick kind of helps screw her over. The character, sorry, is named Danny, and um, Danny kind of helps ruin this her old friend's life because she wants to hook up with this other guy. But Nick kind of finds his vibe with her that she actually he actually likes her a lot. Then Nick, they hang out, and they do this one thing where shoot the ball to tell me a truth, and Nick says, "I'm just pretending to be your friend so I can get." in the relationship and she kind of respected that. And Nick just like commits to this school really because he's in love with Danny. Um, and then Nick, and then that leads into a great episode of that series, which is episode, I think it's seven. Uh, let me double check for you. The episode, sorry, episode eight of 10, um, which is the bad hookup between Nick and Danny. They're hanging out. Uh, the other guy who uh, Danny was hooking up with is not going to this party after all. So Nick gets Danny alone. And they thought they had a good vibe and then they just 
didn't. And it made things awkward. And now it's going to make high school really awkward for Nick because he has now no one to rely on. Now we end the season with Nick having a new Andrew at his school, who's a new best friend, who's voiced by Zach Woods, who, which I cannot wait for. The Zach Woods, who's a really funny comedic actor, John Mulaney fighting over Nick Kroll. Uh, that's gonna be tons of fun in the next season. Um, another character, uh, Caleb, who was very much a side character in the first six seasons, is very much put to the forefront this season with his friendship with Andrew, played by Andrew Reynolds, and that's a really fun dynamic. Caleb always makes you laugh, but the more of him in this season really helped. I really enjoyed Jay and the Lola dynamic. Lola um, dating Jay's brother just to get Jay jealous. Jay having to not graduate on the day of graduation. The principal even saying Jay's name at graduation, saying that Jay's going to summer school, not graduating. Um, and so that's really funny. Makes perfect sense with the character. Uh, another big step, all, another crazy thing that happened is obviously Andrew, um, I, I don't want to go super inappropriate here, but something happens to Andrew where he can't do the thing that he always likes to do, let's just say, that calls him in the yearbook in middle school to be called the grossest, not just person in high school, the grossest human on earth in the yearbook. Uh, so you have that going on. Then you have him touching someone's private parts at high school by accident, uh, which leads him to tr trying to avoid being beat up on the first day of high school, which obviously happens in the season uh, seven finale with him. He apologizes to the girl, but his her boyfriend still beats him up. Uh, but he still learns a valuable lesson from that day. Um, Jessie has a lot of things going on with, with her stepmom. Missy breaks up with Elijah in the season. Um, and you have Missy kind of just being very paranoid, trying to fake being sick to avoid going to high school. But you know she'll have people there and we'll see what Missy does in the next season. Uh, there are also a lot of new characters. There's an episode called The International Show, uh, which was a full-on international episode where after they graduated um, high school, uh, you know, Maury just assumes that only puberty happens in America. And then um, Connie basically explains that uh, it happens everywhere. We got a fun Don Cheadle cameo, um, Lupita Nyong'o cameo, um, which I thought was really good in the episode. Um, but we also, as I said, Zazie Beats. We also had Zazie Beats's, you know, Danny's new hormone monster, who was voiced by Megan Fee Stallion, who also has multiple songs on the season, as well as for the international episode when they go to Puerto Rico, a Lin Manuel Miranda, Lin Manuel Miranda written song uh, got performed as well. So a lot of good additions to the season. I, for me, this might be my second favorite, or maybe my favorite season of Big Mouth so far. I'm happy they graduated middle school. I'm ready for them to move on to high school. And it is kind of sad realizing that there's only one more season left because again, for, like, for someone like me, this season has been going on. This show has been going on since 2017. Every September, October range, really every October, that type of range, we get a new season of Big Mouth, 10 episodes, 27 minutes long every year. And we're now coming up on the eighth season next year, which Netflix already announced is the last season of the show. So I'm very interested to see how the show comes together in its final 10 episodes next year, um, as they will be fully in high school next year. I'm very, and there's a fun bit of Andrew saying, we just started high school. Why are we ending the season here? But it does set up a very interesting last season of Big Mouth. Uh, I'm sad that it's over, but again, I've reviewed a lot of the seasons, both seasons of Human Resources, so I'm so excited to talk even more Big Mouth with you guys next year. So that's my thoughts on season seven of Big Mouth with your thoughts in the comment section down below. I've already done a review of Human Resources this year. Stay tuned for that as well. You can find that link right here and I'll see you guys.